I'm here with Andre Blumer of Associates Ecotourism Romania, Rediscover Romania, and um, we've been working together on a campaign, haven't we, to promote Romania to the world on BBC World News and also to the Romanian people to encourage them to stay home, which really is probably not what they want to hear right now. <laughs> Once the restrictions, the last day, last yeah, day, of, the last stay day home. of staying home, <laughs> but to stay home in their country and rediscover Romania and thus demonstrate their support, their compassion uh, for the tourist industry, the hotels, the restaurants, and the millions of people whose jobs rely on the tourist industry here. So it's an important thing, and we're launching it uh, tomorrow on Monday. So we thought we'd have a chat now and uh, ask each other a couple of questions. So first of all, <laughs> tell me a bit about the association. A bit about the association. Uh, 2003 is the day when we born ourselves. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's a mixture between uh, tour operator, guest houses, NGOs, uh, nature conservation people. Uh, but we do quite a lot on, on de in developing ecotourism from, really from the ground. Uh, and uh, we work with seven ecotourist destinations. In the meantime, the tourist ministry developed uh, a special criteria to uh, judge if a region fits with the ecotourist destination principles. So we have the ecotourism concept embedded already in the legislation in Romania. So it's quite that's, advanced that's at, the, quite something, isn't it? at the European level, yes. Yeah. And uh, sure, we work on product development, on destination management, promotion, and here we are about talking about promotion. And do you think ecotourism is the way forward for Romania? Do you think if ecotourism is the way forward right, for Romania? Right, back at me. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, yes, I do. I think Romania is the wild corner of Europe. I think it has the largest mixed forest left in Europe. It's got two thirds of the European brown bear population, wolves, lynx. It's got landscapes like this and uh, wonderful medieval uh, patrimony and I, and I think all these things lend themselves to ecotourism people want to see history they want to see culture they want to see wide open spaces wilderness forests lonely castles mountain peaks that kind of thing and Romania has that more than any other country in Europe I think so it's a very good thing to be promoting ecotourism because that's the kind of thing that Romania can offer uh, in a way that other countries simply can't mm. Indeed, ecotourism for us uh, is just the mixture between nature, culture, local people. And uh, we put this everything together. We try to speak the language of uh, developers, the language of nature conservationists, the, the language of uh, local people, and to put it on the real market. So, so we do consider that ecotourism indeed it's a, it's a way to put Romania at, at the most yeah. of what they what can offer yes uh, at the European international level and we do consider that uh, for us uh, it's a way to stimulate and to bring the quality actually in the whole tourist sector from Romania because what we do uh, to a certain extent it's it's available for other uh, destinations not necessarily talking about uh, very nature oriented mm. but we talk about responsibility mm. in terms of environment in terms of social in terms of uh, the local plus the 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 stuff your stuff so there is a lot to be developed in Romania in terms of sustainability. Yes, so sir. it's also quite a, a good way of developing uh, the economy of rural areas, isn't it? Because you're actually bringing tourists to areas that have previously not really experienced that as an income stream. It does, yes. The ecotourism and what we do is to bring uh, revenues as much as we can to the local people. We look for businesses that are local based. Uh, and we try to increase through uh, clever destination management, we try to increase all these uh, holes <laughs> where the money can, can enter into the, into the local economy. And this, but as well it's, it's difficult because you need to, uh, uh, to keep a high quality. We are talking about uh, a tourist that is in a huge competition all over the world. So, and we are one of the de destinations in the world, so we compete yeah. with, not with other destinations from Romania, but we compete with uh, destinations all over the place. So what do you feel uh, Romania has that other countries don't quite have in, in such abundance? Uh, what you just mentioned, Romania has the, this mixture between people and nature. 
So this is quite unique for Romania. So when you see a landscape like this, this is where people lived in the last 2000 years, more or less. And the wolf are still here, bears are still here, but people are still here. Yeah. So this mixture brought this nice landscape uh, up to the present moment and mixture of traditions uh, and uh, not looking for uh, up to now for extensive or intensive development. development. Sure, at this point we do have intensive development mm. in Romania in certain areas. Uh, however, the landscape is still uh, pristine, looks, fairly uh, pristine, isn't it? Pristine, yes. Yeah. And uh, as I said, there are ships in the same habitat with wolves. So this is quite unique, <laughs> at least yeah. for uh, one part of Europe that yeah. is more to the west. So, so people have found a balance with nature. But that's also why conservation is so important, isn't it? Because we have to find a way to, I hate to use the word monetize, but actually cash in, capitalize on this wonderful mixture of people and nature, because otherwise the natural world suffers. And by, by, by actually taking people to bear hides, showing them the beauty of these wild animals, which you can't see anywhere else in, the, in, in Europe, you know, to such, such an extent, you actually find an income for people that's different from actually shooting them or hunting them. And, and, and there's an incentive to protect the nature, to protect the natural habitats here, uh, the forest as well as the biodiversity and, and the wildlife. The, the challenge is not necessarily, sure, to protect them, but the challenge is, as you said, to bring this uh, economical mix into the local economy, I mean, to bring these revenues and to make people believe yeah. that it's possible. And we show it's possible. However, uh, to bring enough volume of tourists, but enough to not, in the way to keep the balance, to not uh, be too many, mm -hmm. uh, but to bring enough revenues for local people and as well for, for other type of businesses that the local politician will start to value the landscape through the money that uh, comes in the community uh, from, from this type of tourists. And the votes will come later on into the, yeah. into the scheme. I, I think that that's one of the things that politicians are worried about, that the votes won't come soon enough to actually action uh, legislation like this because they don't want to be unpopular. Yeah. However, with initiatives like you, like your, uh, I think the, they will come sooner. Sooner. Well, yes, it's about changing perceptions, isn't it? It's about changing perception, but at the same time, it's about changing the way that we do tourists in Romania and the way that a destination is managed in Romania. So I dare to say that very few destinations, almost none, are properly, they are not managed in, in a professional way in Romania. So that's the way, the next step that we should start to do proper uh, destination management. Uh, and at that moment, all the marketing and the promotion thing uh, will start to be more professionally done. Yeah. Uh, you, you just initiated uh, this project uh, and uh, it's an example of where to go. I yeah. mean, it's probably one of the very, very first initiative like this, if, if not even the first one. I don't know if ever Romania had a, had a, uh, a campaign in BBC on no, such it, a magnitude. It, it, it hasn't. Not, yes. not and we are in hitherto. 2020. I mean, I it's, it's quite funny to look backwards and, and, and 30, 30 years and we still haven't tried it. And you, we should wait for you to come and... Well, it, it, struck, it struck me that it's not, it's not a lot of money, is it? I mean, it's 45,000 euros to create this campaign on national and international television. Um, to, to, to create films that will actually rebrand Romania in the perception mm. of people living abroad and also maybe make people here reconsider the way they view their own country, mm. um, to, to give them some pride in, in the landscapes that they have here and uh, inspire them maybe to come and rediscover those landscapes. Yeah. But if you think about in the past that um, uh, previous uh, governments have spent over a million on a leaf, uh, and, you know, with, for 45,000 we can actually get Romania seen by people across the United States, across Europe, across the Middle East. Uh, it's really a, a, a small amount of, of, of support um, and investment to actually create a really important and high impact campaign. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, however, there is a need for a long term strategy. vision and strategy, yes. 
uh, that includes marketing Romania. So Absolutely. all the, our our problem is that we keep changing whatever they they name it brand, but it's just a logo by the end of the day. Yeah. And uh, so it's not enough to create just a logo. So you you need a ten year strategy, and so after this to keep to keep working on it because Absolutely. our problem is that Romania has no pers uh, there is no. Uh, no image for no Romania. Brand. No brand. There is no brand. Yes, yeah. still. And but there is a brand, and unexpectedly, it's not so negative as most of Romania would believe. Mm. Uh, but there is this brand that was organically built in the Western society because people came, they had a good experience in Romania. They went back and they tell to their friends. Yeah. But this is something that grow very, very slow, and certainly, it's organic. Certainly, so, in, yeah, in the UK, the perception of Romania has changed through the works of people like Prince Charles, um, and people coming over and discovering the Saxon landscapes, for instance, yeah. through magazines like Vanity Fair, <laughs> Condé Nast, uh, the Daily Telegraph. But my issue is that we've got to stop promoting the same places because Romania is very good at promoting certain destinations. Yeah nations like Pelish Castle, like Bran Castle, where we are quite close to now. And, um, you know, there are so many other places across the country. Banat, you've got Kelinere National Park, Krishana, you've got places like the Bear Cave, the Maramuris, you've got the wooden villages, you've got the wooden churches, you know, you've got the painted monasteries of Bukovina, which I know they do get quite a look in. But then you've got Moldova, if you go further south, you've, you, you've got uh, Piatra Namps, you've got mm. amazing, you know, uh, architecture in Yash. You know, you go down again, you're in Dobroja, and you've got the Danube Delta, which never really gets properly promoted. And, and it's the largest wetland in Europe. Europe and, and, and the delta of the, the, the biggest trade route uh, you know, in history, really, in Europe, because the Danube was the main artery linking all these countries together. So it's something we're custodians of here in Romania and actually should be celebrated and protected, but it's not getting the kind of conservation and the kind of protection and exposure that it needs. Altania, another place that has many treasures, but it's not promoted as a tourist destination particularly. So, I mean, we, we've been around and we've seen all the four corners of, of this country and all the different places, and we need to try to find a way to, 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 to spread the tourism a bit further and a bit more uh, widely across the country to ensure that people don't just come and fill up the buses in Viscri and cram themselves into Bran Castle or Rajnov, all of which are lovely places to see, but that they actually yeah. visit yeah. Uh, other communities and spend their money in, in, in less well-known areas. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we need to develop the product in all these areas. Yeah. So to have a quality product, the infrastructure as well, it's important. When people talk about tourists, they, they only think about highways, yeah. that we don't have highways, but there is a lot of infrastructure still that need to be put in place. Like for example, we, we hardly have any cycling infrastructure in yeah. Romania. And tourists, we need to, to bring more, more quality. Uh, at, at the other, and we need the local authorities or the national authorities to put more trust into the relation with the businesses. So we need to yeah. b bring this partnership uh, in, 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 into the real life of tourists. Okay. Uh, and to not uh, keep, uh, we keep waiting, the businesses are keep waiting. It's not anymore, uh, especially in the last period, uh, last two months, there is a lot going, going to, pulling together different associations, associations in Romania and talking with the government. However, this should be more, much more uh, interactive, yeah. this piece of work. And by the end of <laughs> our covering all this, yes. it's about marketing Romania. We need uh, definitely a fresh approach, uh, a fresh approach yes. Uh, I, I would add two things to that. I think also, uh, it's, it's vitally important and it's nice to see that the government has started to do something more about this uh, to, to stamp out illegal deforestation in this mm. country because no tourists are going to want to come to somewhere that's being branded a wild destination and see mountainsides uh, just, just covered in stumps um, and massive amounts of clear fell. So, you know, if you want to protect uh, the, the wild legacy of Romania mm. uh, and, 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 and have it perceived as the Yellowstone Park of Europe, which, which people have said many times, as you know, um, you have to keep it wild and yeah. we have to sustainably manage the natural resources and, and if we can create tourism in these areas where people previously made money from chopping wood we, we maybe we can show why there's more value in a standing forest mm. than there is in a felled one yes. but, but yes. also I, I would say the other thing for me which is really important is, is, is the planning regulations 
in rural areas. Because if people are still building ugly, concrete, modern buildings and guest houses and pensions, then it's going to compromise again the architectural integrity, the patrimony of that landscape. And, and, and for the cultural traveller who wants to come and see beautiful old buildings and traditional architecture, they're going to be put off and they're going to go somewhere else. They won't want to go and visit that area. Take a place like uh, Brep, which is very beautiful, but it's now got so many modern guest houses that you can't actually see the, the, the horizon, the, 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 the layout of the wooden village itself. Uh, because a lot of those wooden houses have come down, people have built modern ones, and so it's not really a destination for people to want to go and see a wooden village anymore. I mean, there are parts of it that are beautiful, but if we can protect um, these areas of outstanding natural beauty and ensure that if people want to develop and build, which of course they should be allowed to do, uh, it's done in a sympathetic way with the correct architecture befitting the landscape that it's in. Mm -hmm. And if that is allowed, if, if that is strictly enforced, so patrimonial management and restoring old buildings and hanging on to the monuments, not letting places like Baile Herculane fall down, for example, um, old villages are preserved, then combining that with natural heritage conservation as well, then we can actually ensure that all the best things about Romania that we're using to rebrand it and to push it stay there and don't get destroyed. Because in 10 years' time, if we're still saying this is the wild corner of Europe, but there's very little forest left, there's hardly any bears, and, and, and half the monuments have fallen down in the meantime, then it's not really going to ring true to anyone who wants to come and visit. Mm. Indeed, yes. So we should... <laughs> <laughs> should, we should do much more in terms of nature conservation, but yeah. not only in the rural areas as well. This sure. urban planning is a problem yes. all over, from Bucharest up to yeah. I, I think if you have, or yeah, if you have an old building, you, you have a responsibility to look after it. I mean, certainly in the UK, if it's listed as a grade one building and you let it fall down, then you're, then you're heavily penalised and fined yes. and prosecuted for allowing something that is actually a national treasure to fall into disrepair and, and maybe even collapse. Yeah, by so if it's a national treasure, the, the, the state, there should be funds available the state to or the local to, administrations should, uh, yeah, should, should support. Should wade in and do something to yeah, help or at least yeah, give, yeah. give grants. And there are good subsidies. initiatives in yeah. Romania where, where the local administration are doing their best in preserving, yeah. Uh, yeah. preserving the local architecture. Like Orada, it's a good example, and as well Sibiu. Where, where, where the local municipalities are supporting yeah. uh, different initiatives or... Yeah, but it's not, it's not but across the it's country, It's not, it? and it's, yeah, yeah, it depends on the, on the, on the local uh, administration yeah. quite a lot. But well, coming back to you... Well, coming back to me, well, our campaign is launching tomorrow. <laughs> uh, we hope you'll see it on BBC uh, World News. So if you've got uh, satellite or you can get BBC World News, it'll be showing throughout June. Uh, we have four films that will be rotating so people don't get bored of the same message or the same images. Uh, and at the same time, we've also got those films adapted for the Romanian audiences on Digi, Antenna, on Pro TV and on Tevere. So hopefully you won't be able to miss them. Uh, and thank you so for question, being involved. The question, yes, the question the is question. Why, why did you get involved? Why now? <laughs> why now? Oh, why now for me? Well, I think it's very obvious why now because I think we've got, you know, we've had four or five months now of pandemic. Everyone's been inside, they're all watching their televisions. They are captive audiences, really, to, to BBC World News because everyone's watching uh, the international news channels to see the progress of this pandemic and when it's going to be safe or how bad it's going in, you know, in, in Spain or Italy or wherever. So there's a lot of people glued to BBC World News and soon the restrictions are going to be lifted and they're going to go out and they're going to make a decision about where they want to go. Uh, once, once that happens, you know, all the countries in the world are going to be vying for those tourists. So by, by getting in there now and having our films shown in June, we have a head start beyond and above and before the other countries and we can show Romania, we can plant the seed in their minds, help them hopefully to fall in love with this country and then they'll be thinking about taking a holiday here, mm -hmm. especially because people aren't going to be wanting to go to big crowded areas for a while because of the fear of infection. So they'll want open spaces like this, they'll want remote castles, lonely mountain peaks, all that kind of thing which Romania has in such abundance. So if we can around Romania, this wild destination of Europe now, I, I think it'll do a lot to help uh, inspire foreign tourism in the future. Uh, and I think we also need to be doing it now for the Romanian people as we discuss the restrictions are being lifted tomorrow. And uh, we don't want, I mean, it's nice we've got reciprocal arrangements with Greece and Bulgaria and all of that, but, but actually 
don't go to Greece, don't go to Bulgaria, please stay here, explore Romania, rediscover your country, and in doing so, rediscoperate, rediscover yourself. And, and by, by doing that, you're, you're helping the, the tourism immeasurably in Romania, you're helping kickstart the tourist industry again, you know, go and spend your money in the restaurants, uh, you know, with proper, proper social distancing, of course, in hotels, but, 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 you know, spend your time and your energy on your country, and that way we can help save a lot of jobs, and we can do a lot for the economy here in Romania. So I think that's why we needed to start it now. But at the same time, it's not only a social exercise. No. This one, stay in Romania because it's good for the country. No, it's Romania it's has a lot has yeah. a lot to offer for Romanians. So and actually, what we did in the last uh, five years is to develop a network of seven ecotourist destinations. Yeah. And myself, when I go in working and spending like three, four days in this destination, I feel good. Yeah. So if I feel good, I, I like to recommend to other people yeah. to, to, to go and visit because it's really something, it's, it's nice. So either uh, talking about Sara Hatsegul, Zeretezat, mm. or Padura Kraiul in the north of Apusen, yeah. Uh, we have Eco Maramures, which is the heart, the green heart of Maramures, uh, with uh, Maraco, so Cresta uh, We have Vunator Lamts with the bison. Yes. Where they introduced bison is the the first place where the yeah. bison were walking free in the forest. Yeah, where in else Romania. in Europe can you see wild bison roaming the forest? Yes, and we have uh, Tushnad, which the people are connecting with only with the spa, only. But there is a, uh, the best place at this moment to ha to sit in a professional hide for yeah. uh, watching and photographing bears, for example. Who knows about about all these things? So we invite people to come and 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 uh, experience all this. We have Tsara Dornelor and Kalima National Park again. There's so many places. A but region where, where actually it's not yeah. so much on the map of the... Uh, on the but but on tell, me, tell me, Andre, because we, 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 yes. you, know, you and I know the, this, this country so well we could, we could talk for hours about the mm. uh, respective locations. But how do people who want to find out more, um, how, do they, how, do they, how do they discover these places that you mentioned? I mean, presumably they we go do. to your website, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, our, our brand is about uh, Discover Eco Romania. Yeah. It's funny that we are... Yeah mixing the more or less the same words <laughs> yes so discover eco romania discovery eco romania and we have eco romania.ro the website uh, where we can where people could find all this uh, all the information all the need. information okay. that uh, need yes. and and if there are foreign people listening you can always watch wild carpadia or flavors of romania which will be coming out uh, in due course on netflix i actually never told anyone that before so you're hearing it here for the first time i think in about october um but um, and uh, also you can see our YouTube site which has a number of films and we posted up all our content there. So that's, uh, that's um, Team Wild Carpadia on YouTube. So Andre, do, you, do you think yeah. Romania would be a good destination for 2020 or 2021? I, I think it's going to be just fine in about a month's time. Uh, give or take, you know, I think it's going to be fine. I mean, they're opening up from tomorrow. The terraces. What? Terraces. The yeah, terraces. the terraces. Okay. They're opening up the terraces. But I think as far as this is concerned, right now is good. I mean, it's, we're it's here. Open. I'm going for a walk later. So it's, it's open, you know. <laughs> Come on, it's, there's lots of room for everybody. Uh, so yeah, I, I, think, I think, you know, we'll see uh, a, a resurgence in tourism and I hope that all the, the people here will, will be able to open their guest houses again and, and invite the tourists back. But uh, thank you so much for helping us with our and campaign and um, really look forward to next week. Yeah. It's going to be very exciting. And, and uh, Charlie, thank we'll you very posted. much for your campaign. Thank, thank you for, we promoting. couldn't have done it without you. So. <laughs> promoting <laughs> promoting Romania. Right, that's all from us. Thanks a lot, guys. Let's go for a walk. <laughs>